Uh, Jerry Mander, I live in San Francisco. I'm the president of the International Forum on Globalization. Well, the first thing to say about the media is that the, that the degree of impact of the media is much more serious than people generally recognize. And the degree of control of the media is also much more serious. And I'll give your viewers one important statistic, which is that seven corporations control all of global media. I beg your pardon. Seven corporations control 70% of global media. That seven corporations control television, satellite, broadcast systems, cable systems, magazines, radios, newspapers, uh, book publishing, film production, internet connections, film distribution, all media. This is the highest degree of concentration of ownership of any industry. And it's an industry that's not dealing with things, it's dealing with consciousness, it's dealing with putting things into people's heads. And that is how people get a, 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 many more of the ideas and worldviews that they carry around, whether it's about how to live their lives or what fashions to wear or what to eat and what values to have with food and uh, what makes sense in order, in order for them to live their lives. And this is, a, I think, a disastrous uh, situation. I think it's uh, um, terrible to have so many cultural values and lifestyle values and so many um, personal choices in the hands of so few people. Now, the seven corporations are Fox News, Time Warner, Disney, Sony, uh, Bertelsmann, uh, Viacom and General Electric, and those are the, the those seven corporations, all of whom know each other, are all controlling everything or a gigantic percentage of what people receive and learn about, and it's a very serious problem. In in, uh, in the United States, the average person sees 30,000 commercials every year, 30,000 repetitions of exactly the same message, which is to say, do this, do that go buy something, this will make your life better, you'll feel better, you'll do better, and so on, and using very, very powerful interventions uh, technologically in order to achieve that. Um, I don't know how many commercials the average person sees in Japan, but I think it's comparable. I know the average Japanese watches more television than the average American, and it's about four and a half hours per day in Japan. I'm not sure the latest numbers, but four and a half hours per day means that the average Japanese person watches more television than they do anything else except going to school or sleeping or working. During that time, they see a lot of commercials about commodities, including food as a commodity. And um, the commercials are telling them that something is valuable or nourishing or tasteful without explaining very often what the extreme negative side of that is. And, um, and it's uh, inundating them with a view of the fashions of food which uh, have nothing to do with the kind of nutritional values or uh, healthful values or, or the truth, for that matter, um, that would really inform their lives. Now, particularly egregious is the way advertising is directed at small children because in the United States, again, I don't know the numbers in Japan, a huge amount of advertising is directed at children under the age of six telling them to buy, telling them to tell their parents to buy them sugary foods that are not good for them. And uh, there's no way of stopping that, and it's an extremely serious um, problem. So, um, so why are the, these corporations, they're trying to sell these, these foods if, if it's not nutritious? Well, because they're operating on a hierarchy of values that has nothing to do with values that we think are good values. They're operating on profit and growth as their primary values, and if they don't grow in profit, then they're, then they're um, not viable as corporations. So they're, not, they're totally not interested in what, the, in what true value is about. They're only interested in its only self-interest. So when they speak about health or nutrition, it's usually just from a public relations point of view. It may have nothing to do with what's true about the food, unfortunately. Uh, well, I was just speaking about a um, 
the food growers, big corporate food growers, like to say what, what the, that the reason they're doing it is to feed the hungry of the world. The reason they're driving small farmers off the land is that big farming is more efficient and um, that it will grow more food for, for, the, for the hungry. That's a complete lie. Actually, they're not growing food for the hungry. They're growing, they're growing uh, luxury crops for export. And, and meanwhile, they're driving people off the land so you, who used to be food-growing peoples, feeding their, feeding their families and their communities. And more and more, they're not being able to do that. And as they get driven off their land, that increases hunger. And the recent statistics quoted in the New York Times just a few weeks ago um, assert that uh, the amount of hunger at a time when world wealth is increasing, that's to say there's a greater amount of activity, commercial activity than ever before, the amount of hunger in the world is rising uh, exponentially. I forget, it's about 10% higher than it was only five years ago. And uh, especially serious is the problem of uh, what's happening to small children. So the hunger situation is very, very grave. And the uh, industrialization of, and globalization of food production is a very major reason why that's true. Thank you very much. You're welcome.